to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a T92 HMC, it's a tier 10 American SPG located on the north spawn of Abbey under the command of Tarheel Rambler of TNATN. Game on! Well, it's the biggest howitzer in the game, it's 24 centimeters, and as we showed on a video just the other day, there is one of these still in operation. Well, not the actual vehicle, but the 24 centimeter howitzer that is, um, is in operation in Taiwan. And uh, it's actually used every day uh, to fire around across the straits or at the straits to remind China that um, Taiwan doesn't want to be Chinese. <laughs> they are the Republic of China, they are free China. Okay, Tahi and Rambo trying to get a shot there on a Centurion 7 1. Tier 10 game with tier 9 tanks. He's lined up, round south. Gets a direct hit with his first shot. 407 hit points. Okay. The T92 HMC, they built five of them in total. They were going to build more, but um, in the end, they didn't need to because, of course, it was designed for the uh, conflict, uh, the, the invasion of Japan, Operation Olympic. Uh, in the end, they just didn't need them because obviously the atomic bombs went off and the Japanese realised that there was no way that they could fight that and they had to get in. When he's managed to get down from the cap area and he's moving over to the west side of the map, this is normally a good move because you can actually shoot down that big alleyway, the, the one-two line, and shoot at the enemy heavies and collect loads of hit points off them. Um, the only worry you've got is that the enemy artist might know this and they might decide to have a few shells in this direction. The vehicle is basically a Pershing tank, the T26 E3, which you might otherwise known as Eagle 7. That's the tank that killed the uh, Panther outside the um, uh, Cologne Cathedral. Direct hit! Oh, another nice shot. 482. Stunned him. Long stun as well. Okay, these 24 centimeters are capable of 1100 alpha. 60 millimeters of pen, so they can be. In fact, I've seen them pen with armor piercing rounds. 12.4 meters on the burst radius and between 14 and 35 seconds of stun. Standard reload, 46.38 seconds, uh, 46.98, sorry, and he's got a reload of 39.63. He's loaded, rounds out straight away, and he gets a kill. Super Conqueror goes down to that shot. So, so far, it's a good game. I think he wants a piece of that object 430 now. He just got rammed by a, a Doom Turtle. Unfortunately, Doom Turtle got uh, hit in return. Now, we might be able to get a shot directly on the 430. He was trying to escape, actually. Okay, careful. Rounds out. Yes! It it had the um, the Doom Turtle within the blast radius, but he did manage to get the most of the shot, most of the damage of the object 430. Unfortunately, the Doom Turtle had turned around, and one of the 430's teammates shot him in the door. In fact, it was the match at 25 time who got the kill shot, but the 430 did go down, and we picked up 2,564 stun assists so far on this battle. A 1,663 of actual damage, but now, whoa, that was close. If the fat chat had carried on in a straight line, he would have met two arties, um, but he also would have met an STP-1 and a Gorilla-15, and that probably would have been the end of his game. The enemy arty's just been spotted at the other end of the map, and we're dialing in on that position, but unfortunately he goes unspotted before we can get the shot, but we might get to do it. 
We're fully dialed in. We're just waiting for the reload. Oh! And that was a Selma devastating the T92 HMC. He riddled him with shells and he went down. That's the Selma. It was actually in the Abbey area. Well, the enemy bat chat hasn't been spotted. He's gone unspotted now. Oh, there he is. He's actually retreating down the 1 2 line. So he actually could have killed both parties and picked up a medal if he'd come north, but thankfully he didn't. And now they're 257 guys, but our shell lands only a split second afterwards. So we didn't get anything out of that one. But now their back chat's been pinned. He just took out our back chat went by TAB. He's gone down to a shot from the STB1. Oh, our 60TP just took a hit there as well. So we're two up on the enemy. As far as we can make out, there's an object 268 somewhere near that building. We're almost loaded. We do have a target we could find at this TVP, and you've seen it. This thing, take targets of opportunity if they do come to you. That TVP is going to have to get down from there somehow. Rounds out. And that's 392. He's racking up the damage. Almost as much actual damage as Stun Assist so far. In fact, he's got no opponents on this side of the map. They've actually wiped them out. Both parties between them made a huge difference to the team. But the other M53, the other RT on our team, has decided to go back to the cap area. He probably did that after the back chat had his little moment. We can't get a shot in on that STB whilst he's in the Abbey Courtyard. But we can fire shells in this general direction if we can find that object 268. Now our gorilla's gone down to the far end. Now, oh, he's just got hit. So there was somebody nearby and we're firing the shell in. The gorilla has been badly wounded, but that 268 must be somewhere nearby because I think he was the one who actually did the damage. Okay, we've got the leopard prototype up in the Abbey grounds. Join the STB up there. And there's the STB one in the Abbey grounds again. We have got a shot in that general direction. We had to aim carefully for the corner. And we're loaded. Bounce out. And he got it in there. So if the um, if the STB1 was in that corner, he's more than likely taken some damage from that shot. You can see sh shells are still hitting that corner. And that's from some of our teammates. And that makes it kind of difficult for the enemy STB-1 because he can't move out of that position. Now the Gorilla-15 our team is actually pulling back. And I'm wondering if he thinks that the Object 268 has done a quick runner up the 1 or 2 line. And if that's the case, we might spot that guy very soon. Our M53, M55s come back to join us. And uh, he's badly wounded, so I think he took some shells from the STP-1 in the Abbey Grounds. Okay, we've got a shot on the left. Unfortunately, we didn't get it for that one. It was a bit of a snapshot, that one. But I kind of get the feeling that that, uh, that leopard is now kind of trapped in there. Oh! <laughs> he was trapped, all right. The STP-1 got him, and there's the enemy STP-1. And I think he's next. Ooh, he takes some damage on this. Oh, and he's out the game. The K91 got him in the end. So there's only four enemies left. Four up on the enemy. This makes life difficult for them. They've still got one arty out there. That, of course, is the M53, M55. They've got two Object 268s, one of which I think is covering the west side of the map. And the other one is a TVP T5051. As far as we know, that guy is still on the east side of the map, the river road, but he might be returning to his gap area. 
The enemy must know we've got enough force now to take them out. You can see the STB-1 and the Selma are both headed for the enemy cap area now to put pressure on them. We're not watching that at the moment. We're watching where the house is. We're loaded, ready to go. If the 268 is there, then we will get a shot. There's the 268. He actually moved over the other side of the cap. The STB ones found him. Far here, rambling dialed in or dialing in now. I'd love the shell in now. Quick. Rounds out. 3.4 seconds for the shell to arrive. It does hit. And it's 482. The enemy's just lost their TVP because he drowned himself. Bad loser. And this 268 still stunned, and we're picking up stun assist off this as well. That was the M53, M55 coming around in. The 268's down. There's only one 268 left. We know where he is. He must be in that corner. In fact, we found the 268. We found the M53 as well. The M53's gone. And now it's just this 268. So we'll lob the shell in. And with any luck, we might get something out of it. Bounce out. Yes! He did get it to 361, but the guy's got no stun. Um, so he got rid of the stun. And there he goes. And that is a very successful game. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the first ace tanker for Tarheel Rambler in the T92 HMC. You can see it's the first ace because he's got the scrolls underneath the M, and you only get that the first time. He also managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. It's showing four, but he must have got five in order to get the medal. And he also got a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. In fact, he did get one kill in the game. That's Super Conqueror. He overwhelmed that guy. And he got a win eight of 3,191, which is super unit come standard. If we look at the team score, we can see the highest damage in the game turned out to be our STB1 with 4,328. Second highest damage was the 268 on the enemy team, probably the last one alive. He got 3,815 hit points. And the third highest damage, well, that was the 60 TP on our team. Got a steel wall and 3,529. Tarheel Rambler got 3,249 hit points of damage. And that was beaten by only one player on the enemy team, two players on his own team, which means he's in fourth place when it comes to damage with that Confederate. When it came to kills, though, the high scorers were the STB1 on our team and the Batchat 25 ton on the enemy team. Both had four kills. Two kills went to the Greta 15 on our team and the T92 on the enemy team. And when it came to uh, Tar Heel Rambler, only got the one kill there. So, uh, yes, he's in joint third with everyone else uh, who actually got a kill. And when it came to base XP, he's in second place because the STB1 managed 1,029 and Tar Heel Rambler managed 892 in second and 806 went to the 60 TP in the game. He fired 12 rounds, so he only had 16 rounds in total, but he actually managed to get um, uh, a number of those shots out, and that's, I think, helped him to get that ace tanker. He did stun a lot of the enemy, and that made a big difference because some of the tanks he was hitting, the heavy tanks on the 1-2 line, um, he was enabling our teammates to hit them hard as well, and he was picking up loads of stun assist. Three direct hits, none of them penetrated, but he did get 10 splash. 3,249, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damaged eight of the enemy, killed one, and got 3,608 hit points of stun assist off eight stuns, and that gave him the ace tanker. On a premium count, he actually made 46,221 credits profit. He got 25 bonds for mission achievement and seven for this being tier 10, 32 in total. And he also took away 5,352 experience points, including getting a mission completion of 2,676. So congratulations on your second ace tanker um, in recently. He's actually had more than one. And uh, this one is on a tier 10 RT, which is even more special, actually, because when you've uh, nailed a tier 10, 
uh, RT, you can know you can really hammer it out with the enemy. And he really did pick the right spot to go to to get significant damage on the enemy tanks. He stayed on the one two line, although, as I said, at one point it could have been very nasty if that batch at 25 ton and carried on straight up the one two. He would have found two RTs waiting for him at the far end. And if he'd been loaded at the time, I'm pretty sure he would have picked up a Pascucci's medal just like that. Although he probably would have died very shortly afterwards because there was a gorilla and an STB one waiting for him at the other end. So I hope you enjoyed that replay by Tar Heel Rambler. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.